Hi, thank you so much for joining me one more time. Today we are talking about part two of the A-list assignment. And in part one yesterday, we talked about appreciating your attributes. Today, we are gonna talk about affirming your value. Now, what makes something valuable? It's usually how much you paid for it and how rare it is, right? When you think about valuable things, you think about diamonds, you think about luxury items, you think about that sort of thing. You are valuable, right? You have value. And a lot of women sadly don't see this. They don't see their value. And when you spend a lot of time looking outside of yourself for others to affirm you and for others to tell you that you're beautiful, for others to tell you that you're smart, for, for other people's benchmarks, right? For you to be able to check that box and say, yeah, well, this is where I belong, or this is where I have proved myself. When you live your life that way, it's hard for you to see your own value. When there is no one else around, it's hard for you to be able to measure yourself and to see yourself as valued and to see yourself as valuable if you are not getting that feedback from outside of yourself. And this is, this is a struggle, especially for women who have prided themselves on showing up for others or those who are very high achievers, because when you are a high achiever, it comes from your grades. It comes from your performance at work. Those are the, the, those are the benchmarks by which you are measuring your value and your significance in the world. But who are you when no one is looking? Who are you when no one's giving you a pat on the back, when no one is saying, I appreciate you, you've done, a, you've done a good job? Who are you? Do you know who you are? And can you speak to who you are? Can you speak to that woman within and tell her that she's valuable, right? That she's loved, that she's cherished. So this is something that's really important. Affirming your value also, and this is a concept that I don't think a lot of people think about this in this way. There is a way that a woman speaks within herself and there is a way that she speaks to herself. And those things are going to determine how she shows up in the world and how she's going to speak to others. Now, when we're talking about the way you speak within yourself, that's that inner belief. It's the inner belief that you have about what you are capable of. It's the inner belief that you have about what's gonna happen in the future. It's what determines whether you are hopeful or whether you feel hopeless. Let's give the example of a woman who's trying to lose weight. Your inner belief, the way you are speaking within yourself could be, I'm never gonna lose this weight. All of the women in my family are overweight. Um, I've had two children, I should just expect that my body's going to fall apart, right? The way you speak to yourself, let's say you've set a goal, you're like, you know what, I'm going to try, let me just try to lose this weight, I'm going to try to lose 10 pounds. The way you speak to yourself is you can do it. We have a strategy. Um, you know, um, let's see how this is going to work out. Stay positive keep going. These are the things we say to ourselves. But if that inner dialogue, if the woman within is like, forget it, I can't hear you. That doesn't even make sense, right? Those two people, it's like there are two people inside of you. There's a part of you who wants to achieve the goal. There's a part of you who wants to do the thing. And then there's a part of you who either does or does not believe that this is possible, right? And you absolutely have to affirm your value, despite what the goal is. You have to, you have to know your value. This is probably the fifth time that I'm trying, <laughs> that I'm trying to, to film this today. And I just feel like my brain is spazzing, but I rebuke that in Jesus' name. You absolutely have to affirm your value and know that you are worth whatever it is, the effort, whatever the effort is that you are trying to make, that you are worth the effort, not that the goal is worth the effort, but that you are worth the effort. You see the difference there? Because there are many women, high achieving women, very successful women, women that people depend on, strong women who do what they do because they believe the goal is worth it, 
not because they believe that they are worth it, right? And you have to believe that you are worth it, that you are worthy of carrying out this goal. And the way I see it, not as a vision coach, not as a rational, emotive, behavioral therapy certified coach, but as a woman of God, you have to believe that God sees value in you, that God has placed value in you, that he created you with a plan and with a purpose. And if you don't see that, and if you don't acknowledge that, and if you don't believe that in your heart of hearts, if you don't believe that within you, if that does not become your inner dialogue and what the woman within is saying, then it doesn't even matter what your goals are because you will either not achieve them, sabotage yourself, or you will even recruit people to prove in your life and in your circumstances, what it is that you truly believe about yourself. So there's a scripture that talks about being transformed by the renewal of your mind, right? Your mind is that part of you that is just on autopilot and your mind believes what it believes, but your mind can be reprogrammed. Your mind can be transformed and that's where the magic happens. And I don't want to use the term magic because I don't believe in magic, but that's where the transformation happens, right? In your mind. So when I talk about affirming your value, it's not just about saying words that sound good, right? It's not just about saying words that make you feel good or make other people feel good about you. It's actually transforming the woman within so that she truly believes that she is valuable. Because when you believe that you are valuable, you will show up differently at the gym, in your relationships, at work, as a mother, as a, as a sister, as a friend, you will show up differently. Not because you're recognizing your value now as if to say, well, I'm the gem in this situation. And I believe that's a kind of, that's a kind of toxic positivity. I absolutely believe that a woman should know her value. I absolutely believe that. I absolutely believe that a woman should know what she, what she brings to the table in any given situation, but never come off as cocky, never come off as overconfident, never come off as, you know, do they know who I am? Who do they think I am? Never come off that way. And I'm not even talking about coming off that way to other people. Never come across, never come off that way to yourself. That is a dangerous position to put yourself in because that's pride, right? And there's a difference between knowing your value and affirming your value and being proud. And I'm talking about pride as in this sense of overconfidence in yourself, this sense of, of um, you know, I'm, I'm better than them or they don't deserve me. Affirming your value should never take you to that place because when you truly affirm your value as a visionary woman, when you truly affirm your own value, you begin to affirm the value in others and you begin to inspire others because you call out the excellence that is in them. You call out the value that is in them and you challenge them to be better people because of who you are. So changing that inner dialogue, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take soul searching. This is why I recommend journaling. This is why if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you'll see that I'm always asking questions because that's where the value is. The value is deep inside of us. There's a treasure that's deep inside of us. And if we don't ask questions, we don't call out and we don't dig out what is deeply rooted inside of us, what is not deeply rooted, excuse me, deeply planted inside of us that needs to be pulled out, that needs to be polished. When you find a diamond, you don't find a diamond in its, in its cut state, ready to be just placed into a piece of jewelry. You find a diamond, it looks like a dusty rock. 
And if you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to miss it. But there are people who are trained and they understand what a diamond looks like, even in its rough form. And that's something that you have to learn to do within yourself. Recognize the treasure that is within you, even in its rough form, even if it's not yet, yet polished, because a diamond is still a diamond, even if it isn't polished yet, even if it isn't placed into a sparkling piece of jewelry yet and is sitting in the display underneath the lights in some big expensive store. If a diamond is found literally just in the dirt and it's pulled out of the dirt and it's in someone's hand, they know what they have. So don't let the circumstances that you are in make you feel any less valuable. Your value does not come from where you are. Your value comes from who you are, right? And especially from whose you are, right? As daughters of the most high God, we are valuable and you have to know that. You have to know that. And when you know that, your standard becomes higher. Your standard for yourself becomes higher. And the standard that you expect from others becomes higher. Not because of any, um, any false sense of, of, of feeling higher than someone else, but because you now, you now realize your value. And there is nothing wrong with recognizing your value. There is nothing wrong with seeking to be treated like a valuable woman, like a valuable asset to society. And one of the things I'm going to share in my personal Bible study, I was reading Genesis and I was looking at Eve and I was looking at how God created Eve. And one of the first things he said before he created Eve was, it is not good that man should be alone. I will create a suitable helper for him. So this man is not just man as in the man, Adam. It's mankind. Woman was created to be an attractive solution to the world. You have value in terms of the things that you are going to do in the world for people. Your value is in those things. You provide value at your, at your work. You provide value in your family. You provide value in your relationships. But the value that you provide comes from who you are, not what you do. It comes from who you are, not what you do. And when you begin to work on the woman within, when you begin to work on things that develop your character and your faith, and your, your mindset, when you begin to work on those things, what happens is you increase your value. So if you watched yesterday, remember what I said about appreciating your attributes means that you increase the value of it. But in order for you to get to the point where you're going to invest the time, the money, the mental energy, the focus, whatever it is that you need to invest to increase your value, you have to recognize value. You have to recognize the value first, and then you're going to want to increase it. So I know that I said that affirmation is not just about the things that you would say to yourself, but it comes from within. You're going to have to say things to yourself in order to make those changes within, because what the woman within you believes is a result of what has been said to her and what has been done to her. And one of the things that we don't often see is that life is not about what happens to you, but it's about what happens through you. But because so many women have had hard lives, have had challenging times, have had really tough seasons, they have closed themselves off. They have closed themselves off even to the healing that they need. So what happens now is that nothing can come through you. Your value is exhibited in what you do. But when you close yourself off through shame, through disappointment, through guilt, nothing can come through you. So you are now unproductive in the very areas where you are designed to give value. 
So you have to be able to say to yourself, I am capable of being a good wife. I am capable of being a good mother. I am capable of being a good business owner. I am capable of being a good friend. I am capable of achieving this goal. I am capable of this. And you have to find what it is that your soul and your heart and your spirit need to hear because it's different for every woman. What you need to say to yourself within yourself, what you need to repeat and reinforce within yourself is not the same as what I need to hear, is not the same as what my friend needs to hear or what my daughter needs to hear. And I think very often what's happening is that society is putting us in these boxes where it's like, you have to look this way, you have to sound this way, you have to dress this way. And our value, our true value is in our unique identity, right? That unique, authentic identity. So discovering who you are is what's going to help you see your value. If you don't know who you are, you're never going to see your value because your value is always going to be attached to who you belong to or who you show up as right? And it could be a mask that you wear. And the mask that you wear is something that could be thrown away. So that has no value. Your value is in the parts of you that no one can take away. And you absolutely have to treasure that. You treasure it within yourself. When you treasure it within yourself and you start to speak about yourself differently within, deep within, you start to speak about yourself differently and you start to speak to yourself differently. So instead of saying, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did that. You'll say, okay, I made a mistake. Where did I go wrong? What can I learn from this? And how can I do better next time? And in that moment, you're seeing that I'm not going to talk myself, talk down to myself. I was about to say, I'm not going to talk myself down, but I am not going to talk down to myself because you might just be repeating what you heard other people say about you. So you have to learn to talk to yourself better. When you talk to yourself better, that changes the dialogue of that woman within. And one of the things that I had to say to myself, I remember when I started speaking and I started coaching, I had doubts about whether or not anything I said would be impactful whether anything I said could actually change a woman's life or a woman's mind. And I had to talk differently to myself. I had to talk myself through every single thought, every single negative thought that came up. I had to talk myself through it. And the Bible talks about that too. It talks about casting down imagine, imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. The knowledge of Christ is the knowledge of the best you. So anything that's below that, any, any thought that is coming into your mind that is below that is that has to be, you have to talk yourself out of it. And one of the things that I did was, this is my phone right? And on my phone, I would put these affirmations. I would, let's say, I think I had about eight, maybe eight or even 10 affirmations. And it was over the course of almost a year that these affirmations would go off as alarm. So I have an iPhone and you know how you can change the label on the, the alarm. So it would say stuff like, pick up the kids at 2 p.m. or, you know, stuff like that. But instead of something like pick up the kids at 2 p.m., mine said this one particular one that really got me over the threshold of not being able to speak and being so nervous about what I had to say was, I am a woman of influence. God works on me, in me, and through me to illuminate and elevate every space I enter. I said that daily. This is before I had a single speech speaking engagement. This is before I sat with a single visionary, right? I said that over and over and over again to myself. So I got to the point where 
when I was having one-on-one calls, when I was invited to speak, that I was able to do it confidently because I believed it, right? Because I truly believed it. Do I get the jitters just before I talk? Yes. Yes, I do. But the more I do it, it's more out of excitement. It's more out of me knowing what I have within me to pour out, right? It's more out of me knowing that when I sit one-on-one with a VIP, that I have strategy that she can apply, that she can customize to her life, that I actually have something to offer, that I actually have value to offer. But it's not about the program and it's not about those types of things, but it's about me. It's about the woman within. I cannot confidently coach. I cannot confidently speak. I cannot even confidently come and and do this YouTube video if I don't recognize my value. So if one person likes this video or a hundred people like this video or a million people like this video, that does not increase my value. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you have to see yourself the same way. That God has placed unique value in you. And when you recognize that, how you show up in every single facet of your life, from family to community, to how you care for yourself, how you show up in every single facet of your life is going to improve once you can affirm your value. So I encourage you, if there is something that you are struggling with, if there is an area of your life where you feel like I am not making an impact, I don't have any value in this area, sit with yourself and ask why you feel that way. Is it because of the feedback that you're getting from the people around you or the lack of feedback that you're getting from the people around you? Or is it something else? And don't be afraid of the silence. If you are a woman who is not used to journaling and you're not used to introspection, you're not used to sitting with yourself and sitting with your thoughts, it's going to feel uncomfortable. You're not used to the silence. There's, you might've heard my washing machine going in the back. Usually when I'm in my house, it's silent. There is no music. There is nothing. I have learned to be comfortable with this. And this is my personality. I I don't like a lot of noise. I don't need a lot of noise in my life. My mind is clearer when I don't have any noise. And there are a lot of women who they play music. They, they have the television on. They do all these different things. And your space, your mental space, your mind, your heart, your soul, your spirit, everything is so full of noise that it's hard for you to hear yourself. And Christian women struggle with this because that there is, there is the mindset that self is not what you need to hear, that God is what you need to hear. But I beg to differ. You need to hear both because if you don't, if you don't hear yourself, you don't speak honestly to God, right? If you don't hear your true thoughts and your true feelings, and you don't feel that, you cannot bring an honest prayer to God. So I really want to encourage you to sit with yourselves and learn to hear yourself. And in that, pray And ask God, if you don't know what you bring to the table, if you don't know what your value is, ask him, God, please reveal to me, show me who I am. Show me who you created me to be. Show me what my unique purpose is, what my unique, um, my unique flavor and fragrance for the world is. And he'll tell you. It may not be what you expected. It may not be what you think it is. And it may be something that's been there all along that you've been ignoring, that you didn't think was that special. But I'm telling you, you are special. 
you are amazing, you are unique, and you absolutely have value. Once you find what that is, affirm it. And until you find what that is, affirm your value, even when it's ambiguous, even when you don't know. And it's simply by saying, I have value. I have value. I have value. And you say it until you believe it, until you disrupt the woman within who has been telling you otherwise. I really hope this helps. Thank you for joining me. Blessings on your journey. Check the description box and I will talk to you soon. Bye.